Yeah, let me first say that uh, location addressing makes a lot of sense for certain kinds of use cases. Um, so, it, so it makes a lot of sense when you want to specifically designate some authority or some some set of computers as as the um, you know source of truth on on what the current state of something it might be. Um, but it is not very good for just large amounts of data or storing data that you may want to access uh, offline. So the the alternatives. Um, one example might be content addressing, and so this is what IPFS uses. Uh, content addressing is the practice of saying, instead of creating an identifier that uh, addresses things by location, we're going to address it with some representation of the content itself, meaning that the content is going to determine the address. This pretty much means you take a file, you hash it cryptographically, so you get a very small representation of the file, um, that's you know secure, uh, so that you can't just come up with some other file that has the same hash, uh, and you use that as the address. So the address of, of a file in IPFS um, usually starts with a hash that identifies some object, some root object, and then a path walking down. So instead of a server, you're talking to a specific object, and then you are looking at a path within that object. Uh, you're, you're, you're sort of looking at a root of a graph, and then walking down its links to find whatever it is that you're looking for. A file, and then basically that points to some location, and you go there, and then it gets whatever's on that location, which may be the same when it was created, maybe something else, who knows, right? Uh, so, but you sort of go out looking at like what is at that location, whereas with IPFS, it would be, uh, you know, you have this file, and you go out, and it's like, where is this file? Yeah, exactly. So in, in IPFS, you have these addresses, which mean the, the content. So you start with the hash and so on. And then you have to solve the problem of, of locating it uh, separately, right? So, so HTTP has this nice property that because the identifier is the location, you know exactly where to go. You talk to those computers, and you get the file. So it's nice, and, and that can be pretty fast. Uh, but it doesn't work in the offline case, right? And it doesn't work in... Um, in large distributed scenarios where uh, you want to minimize the round trips or you want to minimize like the, the load across the, the network. Um, and certainly when you have just tons of data, it becomes a pretty big problem to just constantly be making requests. Um, instead, in IPFS, you have this separate, you, you separate the steps. And so the first step is you identify the file with content addressing. And then the second step is you actually go and find it. And so when you have the hash, uh, you ask the network that you're connected to, uh, you basically ask who has this, this uh, content, who has this hash, uh, and then you connect to those peers and download from them. This is basically what DHTs do. Uh, so this is a well-known well um, technique. Uh, this has been around for 15 years. In fact, this is uh, how BitTorrent works nowadays. Uh, nowadays, when you uh, go and um, download a torrent, it usually starts with an info hash, and that info hash is just a a hash that gives you um, a set of peers in a, in a DHT, and then from them you download the torrent file, and then you start downloading the, the rest of the file. Um, so this is not new. This is actually a pretty old idea. It's been around since 2000 or 2001. Um, but it hasn't been you know, put as part of the, of the web itself uh, yet. There's been some attempts in the past, but they haven't um, They've been a sort of like different layers. Uh, I think like an, uh, the most notable one I think is is NDN. So this is name data networking, and the idea was to put uh, content addressing directly in the IP layer. So um, and this was a project started by by Van Jacobson, who's uh, you know famous for for basically fixing TCP in the 80s. TCP broke, the internet fell apart. Uh, Van Jacobson came in and said, uh, "Here's how we fix it," and he came up with the entire field of congestion control. Um, for TCP and so on, and and just sort of became an internet hero. Uh, and lately, uh, what in the last I think uh, 10, 10 or so years, he's he had been working on name data networking, which is the idea of putting content addressing at the IP layer. Um, it's really difficult to do because in order to get uh, the entire network to move off of IP to something like NDN. Uh, you need massive buying across the world. Uh, I mean, we haven't even switched to IPv6. Uh, I think like switching to something else would be even way less likely. And so 
we are working at a layer above, which is uh, let's put content addressing at the HTTP layer uh, and move from something like HTTP to something like IPFS, um, which can in fact generate demand for for NDN. So if if NDN existed and and was and gave and we weren't over IP, but we were over NDN, uh, IPFS would be a lot easier to build. Uh, it would be a much much faster thing to to get through. Um, but uh, we basically had to do all this like intense peer-to-peer -peer work to wrangle this point-to-point -point link network into a peer-to-peer -peer overlay that gives you really fast routing. Um, 